and welcome back everybody. Hopefully another short and exciting video here, Blue Glow Electronics. We are um, trying to get through a pile of backlog I've had and a bunch of what that has been has been Maranch units. So trying to get those kind of caught up. I've got a new project coming up. Um, it's probably going to take me a couple months to get done, but um, instead of restoring some stuff, I'm actually going to build something and uh, I think everybody will be excited about it and I'll make videos of that as I go. But I want to get this backlog of customer stuff out of the way. So um, as you've probably seen, I've posted a couple videos how to replace the relay here, um, how to replace some phono board, how to rebuild the phono boards. Um, just got done recapping the output boards on these on this uh, 2265. And I got to rebuild the power supply this week um, at this point. So I thought I would uh, make a quick video on how to be rebuild the power supply in a Marantz unit. Um, 99.999% of the time, um, this little board right here, every Marantz will have one. They're sometimes a little bit different, a little larger, a little smaller, depending on the Marantz. But it'll always have this uh, power supply board, as well as um, a set of power supply caps, uh, large ones for the output, and just basically a bridge rectifier underneath. And that makes up the entire power supply for Marantz unit. I will always recap all the caps on this board and then I will set it according to the factory specs for the voltage out using this little potentiometer. I'll show you how to do that. And then um, I'll talk to you a little bit about these caps here and what we do sometimes and what we don't do sometimes. Okay, I've got it flipped upside down. You can see the bridge rectifier here. I've got the unit unplugged. Um, it's part of the power supply. And then you've got these two large caps. And I want to demonstrate something for you. Please don't ever do this at home. And uh, But I want to show you what happens when you short these two. See the sparks flying here? Um, basically what I'm doing is discharging the output capacitors. Did you see that big pop? Um, these things are loaded, I'm telling you. Um, and that's why you don't want to do this. <laughs> but my point was, typically you should do that by getting a 100 ohm resistor, connected it in series with a, uh, oh, just a little, um, see here? <laughs> Um, I do it quite frequently, but um, connect one end to the ground here, which is common in the middle, and then you use the other end on the other side of the resistor to actually touch the uh, the capacitor, and it lets it bleed off slowly. What I did was a fast discharge. Uh, it's not really good for the capacitor because a big surge of current there, but as you could see, uh, made quite the sparks here. So uh, just the the reason I did that was to make a point. These things store large amounts of energy for hours, <laughs> not just minutes, hours, sometimes days. Um, so you could open something up a day later and get in here and get your finger across something and still get shocked pretty good. So uh, let's play safely and uh, do this thing the way we should. Okay, as you can see, I've hooked two test leads up, one to the negative bar that's common on these and one to one of the capacitors. Imagine if I had hooked up my delicate piece of electronics here and that thing was still charged the way it was a minute ago. Um, I probably fried my meter. At any rate, we'll turn this thing on and let it run. All right, you're seeing, we you already see the ESR is 0 0.02 ohms on this thing. Extremely low and a really good capacitance value there. So, um, you know, I will tell you that I work on a lot of Marantz units, probably anywhere from 40 to 50 units a year, and um, we'll do this side as well. There again, 0 0.02 ohms of uh, equivalent series resistance. Um, very, very rarely, and on this one I got an in-circuit leak, leaky, and that's because there's too much in parallel with it for it to actually measure the capacitance, but I will tell you that 99% of the time, these large capacitors here are still good in these Marantz units. It is only maybe one out of every 50 to 100 units that I work on that I find these large capacitors are leaky. Every once in a while when I do, let me flip this thing over and I'll show you what I do. Okay, you can see these things are really large, massive. Um, this are, these are Nippon Chemicons, really good, high quality stuff. But um, you can't buy these anymore, the, the great big ones like this. Um, so you end up having to put something different in, and I'll, uh, I'll show you what that is. All right, here you go. Hey, good morning, Jack. Oh, he decided he didn't want to hang around with me. At any rate, 
we've got um these are some really nice brand new Nippon Nippon Kibikon 63 volt 10,000 microfarad capacitors um, that you would use to replace those others they're about half the size these things are not cheap um, you can get you can get into the twenty to thirty dollar range a piece on these and because they're smaller you have to buy some new brackets that they'll mount into ultimately to uh, mount into the board the, the ones that are in there now are too large um, every once in a while I'll get a customer that says hey um, I want them all replaced top to bottom everything in there and I'll do this or every once in a while I'll test these and find uh, find that they're starting to break down got a little bit of um, equivalent series resistance and I'll replace them then but like I said 90% of the time I don't and I imagine these things will run for another 20 to 30 years and uh, when they do need replacing we will but it's just a you know you're looking at a sixty seventy dollar type uh, type of ordeal here maybe uh, fifty if you're lucky and uh, you know, most customers if it doesn't need it just aren't willing to um, throw that at it but uh, it's just my approach um, you'll have some purists out there tell me I'm wrong and that you should go ahead and replace everything uh, needed it's kind of like taking your car into the shop and uh, you know getting your oil changed and they and you go to pick it up and they say oh yeah by the way it's gonna be eight hundred dollars because we changed your brakes and uh, and your headlights and everything else while you while we were at it um, you know you wouldn't be a happy camper so I always give the customer options talk them through it tell them what uh, tell them what it might cost tell them how long I think it'll last with or without doing it and uh, kind of take it from there let me show you a unit that I did put these in okay you can see here the, the mounting brackets are smaller than the original and they've mounted down in here quite well um, this is a Marantz unit for a customer I had been working on and uh, we did end up replacing those um, mainly because the customer wanted the entire thing recapped so we uh, we did so so back to this unit these tested fine I mean less than one ohm uh, ESR and it was 0 .02 <laughs> not even one tenth um, of an ohm so I think these things will last another 20 or 30 years I will leave them alone. These, on the other hand, um, I wouldn't bet that they would last it to tomorrow. Uh, so I'm going to replace all of these. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight um, capacitors. And any time I touch a Marantz unit, I don't care what I touch it for, if these have not been replaced, I typically replace them. Um, they get a lot of work. Uh, these are the main power supply caps that feed a lot of different places inside of this thing. These two here really just feed the outputs here. Um, and um, so these are feeding, you know, your, your uh, FM boards and your preamp and uh, phono stage and a lot of other things that are really sensitive to uh, any hum, um, especially early on in the receiver as you go through the various stages. Um, the earlier you are in an amplifier, the more sensitive it will be to any type of noise on the line or whatnot. So let's go ahead and get these replaced. I typically don't replace transistors here or diodes. They're typically, if they're working, I leave them alone. Only if a relay is acting up do I replace it. Um, so it's typically, like I said, just the, uh, the capacitors that I rebuild in these things. And uh, to do that, I don't actually pull this board out. Um, what I end up doing is laying it on its side, and I'll show you here. Before I flip this over, I want to show you um, a tip, and uh, please follow this one. Pick you an orientation spot on the amplifier. I typically pick the faceplate, because it's, there's only one of them, and it's always there. Um, and then I will get a black magic marker, and I will put a tick mark on every capacitor facing the faceplate. So you can see here, every capacitor on the side facing towards the faceplate, I put a little tick. and. Um, it makes it so much easier when you pull one of these out um, from the other side because you know, you'll be kind of working from the bottom and you've got it in your hand then and you're sitting there going oh gosh which way did it go and I will tell you I've seen boards on uh, various amplifiers where they're marked wrong so um, please mark with the little tick marks it makes it so much easier to trace down where how they need to go back orientation wise um, let me get it flipped over all right. Typically, this is my mode of operation. So I've got um, got my soldering iron here on this side. I've got the board right here. I'm reaching around on the other side, grabbing a capacitor, kind of getting a feel for which connections might go to it, 
and then I'll start heating those, uh, heating it up on this side and wiggling the capacitor on the other side until it pops out. And once I've got it in my hand then, hey, I've got a tick mark that tells me which way is north here. <laughs> I can then um, you know, really easily um, look at the stripe on it and know which way it should be going and its orientation. So just hold tight. We're going to walk through and uh, replace all these caps at this time, and I'll show you a couple as I go. Okay, we got our first capacitor out, uh, 220 microfarad here. And uh, don't be surprised if the capacitor you're replacing it with has a higher voltage rating and is half the size. Um, it's just what modern electronics are. Uh, they've gotten much better with the chemicals uh, in these things. So we'll get this one installed and we'll make sure we get it in the right orientation. And if you'll notice where I'm grabbing them on the top, so I'll come along and I'll select one. Like I'm going to get this one next. And uh, I'll just grab it tight, get to the other side, you know, find the solder leads. And one, one, one thing that will help you refine the solder leads is, look, you, you see the stripe on this one right here. Uh, not the stripe I put, but the, the negative stripe, which tells you that the, pole, the two, the two uh, pins are going in this way. And then if you come around to this, you just get in the general vicinity of where that thing was at, and you look for two pins going in, you know, perfectly in parallel there, and here they are. It's those two right here. But um, one other tip here I was going to show you around on this side. As I, as I do each of these, if you'll notice I color them red once I'm done with them, once I've replaced them. Then there's no disputing what's been done, what's not done, and uh, what's marked here uh, to be done. One thing to note, look at these little caps like this come out really easily. Once you start heating the two um, spots on the other side, you kind of wiggle them back and forth. I usually wiggle them, you know, if the leads are like this, I'll go straight that way and then straight back this way. And I'll kind of take turns getting the leads hot. And finally, it'll work its way out and break fluid. Some of these larger ones are a little tougher to do. And the reason being, if you'll notice all around this, these things are glued down. Not only soldered in, but they were glued down to the motherboard there. So um, not only are you trying to work back and forth to break, you know, the, to get the leads out of the hot solder, but you're also having to break loose this glue. So sometimes these can be a little tougher than, uh, than they look from the surface. Okay, as you can see, we've got them all replaced. Um, some of them much smaller than the originals, some of them bright in color. <laughs> but um, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, one, four, five, six, seven capacitors we replaced all total. The very last step in this, uh, in this process, let me take you over to the computer screen real quick. Okay, you're going to want to go download the service manual and just type in to Google Marantz 2265 or whatever model unit you have is and uh, service manual and download it. And when, you get to, when you get it downloaded, you're going to scroll down a little bit till you come to a section called Audio Adjustment. Um, and this, what you're really starting to do here is set the bias on this amplifier. Um, but the first part of the bias process is to adjust the power supply. So if you'll notice here, it says connect a DC voltmeter between pin terminals J804 and J805 and adjust the trimming resistor R806 for 35 volts DC. So let's go do that. First thing you're going to need if you're going to connect to J804 and 805 are a set of these small micro clips um, that ultimately feed back across and uh, plug into my leads that go into my voltmeter. And all I've done now is turn this uh, unit on, and I've got those two connected to 804 and 805. And if I come over here and look, I've got 32.74 volts. And it told me to adjust this thing for 35 volts. So I'm not, uh, I'm not where I need to be as far as voltage. This right here, this little potentiometer that you can turn with a screwdriver, is what will let you adjust this from 32 volts up to, I'm going slow with it, about 35 volts, 34.99. Close enough for uh, for what I'm doing here, so we're going to leave it there. But that that's all that was involved then in setting the uh, power supply adjustment post that. I'm going to go ahead and bias this unit at this point while I've got it all hooked up, but um, I've got another video out there on how to bias some ranch unit already, so not gonna not going to show those steps here. Thanks again for watching everybody. Hopefully another short and easy video to follow on how to rebuild a power supply. The same set of steps holds true to any of the Marantz units and the power supply units inside of them.